Well, good afternoon, guys. I'm just calling a day here with an inspection at Premium Coach Group here in Gilbert, Arizona. Unfortunately, there's a storm brewing over there. Now, I say unfortunately because just Friday, which is about three days ago, I did an inspection on a 1998 Newell that I wanted to share with you guys, but it was raining as can be. I almost decided to uh, cancel the inspection because of the rain. It wasn't safe to get on the roof or to walk around without tracking a lot of uh, mud and dirt in it. So I thought I'd come back today after doing another inspection here to share what I thought was an incredibly nice 1998 Newell Motor Coach and prove that if you just take care of the things, they will last almost forever. Now, I just want to show it to you guys really fast so we won't be getting up on the roof, but I can tell you the roof is in wonderful condition. And again, that's why you buy a Newell because of its very durable metal roof. And while the paint scheme is very unique and I haven't seen it before, that's not why I wanted to share it with you guys. And it's not also because it has a slide out on the driver's side and a second one on the passenger side at the rear. And these are HWH slide out rooms with the air bladder seal that is completely intact and operating. And while the opposing dual slide outs does give a very unique floor plan that I did want to show to everybody that I haven't seen on a Newell, especially of 1998. And sure, it does have 365 tires on the front and fairly new tires at the rear. The main reason I think this is a good value and something I wanted to share with you guys is back here. This is a Detroit Diesel Series 60 in the back. That's not completely unique to uh, have on a Newell. It's not something I see very often anymore. But I think it is uh, worth noting that this very popular power plant in the back of the Newell might be reason enough to purchase it. Especially when you recognize that it only has 151,000 miles on it. So with all that being said, I do want to take you guys inside and take a look at the floor plan of this, but most importantly, the condition of it. Somebody really did love this and took a lot of care of it. And I'm almost to the point where I'm kind of liking these manual doors much more than the air-driven Newell doors that tend to wow everybody. But that's likely because I have to work on them. But before we go inside, I do want to point out that this is, I think, the first time I've seen a Carefree of Colorado power awning as a patio awning on a Newell. I think it was just a fairly recent addition to it. It has a beautifully matched burgundy acrylic fabric on top of it. But if you notice on top of both the slide outs, the original, if problematic, Zipti uh, slide out toppers are now removed and replaced with a modern Carefree of Colorado slide out topper. Meaning that's the last of the Zipti awnings on this Newell. And yes, for those wondering, those are the generator and aqua hot exhaust coming out the roof, which is something of a Newell trademark of this era. But I've prolonged it long enough. Let's go ahead and get inside and see this floor plan that I can't stop talking about and why I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, one of the most obvious features of this floor plan is that it's a mid-coach entry. Now, it does have a tile with a granite flooring as a landing, and it is plush beige carpeting throughout the rest of the salon area right here but all the way to the back hello but now this only has one slide out in the salon area and it's a massive salon even with only one slide out room but still retain the standard newell dinette booth solid surface corian countertop does extend out there is a leaf to uh, extend that table and of course the all-important newell acrylic table leg would just fit right up in that pocket right here. Now, because the tabletop also expands out, the booths themselves expand. This one's already been expanded. That one's still collapsed down, but this fabric is still in really good condition. Forward of that is a very large sofa. Now, this sofa does turn into a bed, and it does have drawer storage underneath, but it does just jackknife into place. A very long twin-sized bed, but this is real leather on the sofa. Now, while it might be a very beige interior, uh, just the color for pillows right there give you an indication of how easy it would be to update the look of this motor hooch. However, all the upholstery is in wonderful condition, and thankfully, none of the uh, window coverings are power. They're all just manual blinds like I would love to have. Oh, I do have in mine. Just across from there, this has a coffee table instead of the standard Newell 
weird looking ottoman. I kind of like that better. But I think the a recliner right here has been upgraded from the original source that it was. It is power now. Very cool. Now I won't lie, this has all the charm of a 1998 Newell up to, this look didn't change up to about 2006, 2007, but that means it's been very well maintained and it gives you a great base if you wanted to change anything with. Instead of having complicated push button multiplex system on it, these are all just rocker switches, very easy to change out. Yes, above the driver's seat, they have updated the TV with a Samsung TV. I'm not too confident that the uh, Top Vision soundbar was mounted uh, up to uh, my standards, but it does exist. Over here, you still have all the same charm that you would have on all modern Newell's without the, with the exception of no silver leaf control up here. But even the Sony CRT backup camera is still firing and working great. I did just do all the inspection, and this steering wheel I've never seen before has a little lever right there. That's how you do the uh, telescoping on the steering wheel, and it has the old school GM steering column on it, including a key release like you would on a clutched vehicle. Now this still does retain the Detroit Diesel digital dash functions on it. The original uh, Sony cassette player radio. HWH air leveling. Now even though this does have the ultimate horn still with 99 different programmable sounds. They also opt for the pedal that does a train whistle. But you still also get the normal air horn. Now surprisingly for a new motor coach, the Dash AC still blows ice cold. I always like the hidden glove box right there with cup holders for the passenger they even have a radio control in there for the dash radio and what could be more luxurious than to drive down the road as a passenger basically in an easy chair and because there's not a front door right by the passenger seat they don't have to uh, stress out when the driver has to get in and out the front door because it's mid-coach entry we go ahead and move a little bit further back same solid surface Corian countertop you would see on that dinette table but it has an integrated Corian sink on it. And surprisingly, in 1998, it still has a single handle uh, lever for the faucet. I would probably upgrade this faucet though. The Insta Hot, I would also probably upgrade or probably remove and just put a soap dispenser in. But it does have the asymmetrical sinks that I do tend to like with a deep sink over here and a small little bar sink over here. And look at that, it still is etched with Corian, showing that this is a true Corian countertop. When it comes to the walls and the cabinetry, it's that same high quality laminate you're gonna find on most new old motor coaches. Most of the uh, cabinetry, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and a 2010, 12, 13. I like these dishwashers a lot more than a drawer dishwasher from Fisher and Pykel, these apartment sized dishwashers. Well, it's surprising that if you guys didn't notice, there's no garbage disposal, because usually there is a garbage disposal in a new one, but I do like that feature. The sharp carousel convection of a microwave has been upgraded from the original one that would have been there, so it's a lot more modern, but it still does have the heart interface uh, uh, inverter on it, which is fi uh, firing just fine. And the rest of the control panels up here are also operating. I already walked by what I think is one of my favorite features on a new one. Not a sub-zero refrigerator, but an actual residential refrigerator. All too often, Newell likes to hide the refrigerator to make it look like cabinet doors. But these residential refrigerators, especially the Amano ones, seem to last almost forever. And I think having water and ice in the door is a feature that not a lot of people are appreciating enough in these luxury motor coaches. Over here is just going to be the slide-out pantry. Normally, Newell has way too many slide-out pantries, so this is the perfect amount with adjustable shelving above. But this first door, hello, is the one thing I wanted to show you guys. We have a mid-coach bath here. Now, this is a porcelain toilet. Uh, these are not my favorite toilets, but this is uh, a bath and a half. A bath and a half in 1998 was not common at all. They weren't even common in 2006 or 2008. Yes, the granite flooring continues in right here. And what's not to love about a beautifully polished brass sink and a mirrored medicine cabinet above. I don't know, seems pretty classy to me and in wonderful condition. 
Now just across from there, before we go further back, there is a like a broom closet or even an overflow dressing closet. These are the vents for the two burner radiant stove top. So this is all electric. It does have hydronic heat on this also. And speaking of hydronic heat, I did uh, gloss over something that I'm sure everybody wants to know. There are no ACs on the roof of this motor coach. This has two basement ACs, generally called RVACs. And unsurprisingly, or surprisingly to me, they both work and they blow very cold and the whole place is quiet when they're running. The previous owner did mount a new control for it right here. Rather than having the plenum in the ceiling right there where it's still pretty loud, the air discharges from right above here. I don't know if you guys can see the discharge vents there. And they hid the air filters underneath the entry step right there. Very clever, Newell. Now, even though I didn't like the air-driven entry door, we still do have the air-driven Star Trek doors to the bedroom here. I still can't apologize for loving spaceship doors and a Newell motor coach. No matter how impractical they really are. Now, if you remember, we have a one bedroom slide out. This is a king size bed and it does lift up and there is storage below it. Pretty standard Newell function of this era. What's not nearly quite as standard in a Newell are windows you can see out of in the bedroom and windows that you can open up for ventilation just like a bus and windows that are actually big enough to serve as an emergency exit window. You don't need a little hammer to break the glass to get out of these in an emergency. Now you do have some closet space in here. There's a small little closet over here with its own little closet rod. And directly across is another little closet with uh, two closet rods on it. There is drawers on either side of the bed nightstands and honestly all the upholstery here is in pretty good condition the only thing that i really saw that was questionable is the ceiling fan now this entire section goes in and out with the slide out i would probably remove the ceiling fan and just put a light right in its place from there this would have been where the original crt tv would have been hidden behind the door and you can see through the door itself you still have the alarm clock above here's the control for the other rvac ac Again, it's still working. That's going to be the slide out room control. And hidden right here is your hamper. It just snaps on over here. Very clever, if not a little bit over engineered. And yes, right over here on the other nightstand is an intercom. You can talk to the driver or the front door if you wanted to. Now, quite often, Newell's have a very awkward bedroom setup. I think this one worked out pretty well. And even though I like those uh, air pocket doors, we just have a hinge door right back here to get to the main bathroom. We've returned back to granite flooring. And I think this rear bathroom is probably my favorite bathroom I've seen on a Newell of late. The corner shower does actually have a deep tub to it. And because you have hydronic heat with a uh, tankless water heater, you could fill that up and take a little soaking bath if you wanted to. Yeah, it's quite a substantial step up if you were going to step up in there. Yeah, that's probably about two feet step up, but into here, and you can do it. I'm six foot tall, and my head's sticking above, but the shower head rest is right there. It's not too bad. When I go to step out, uh, that was close. And just forward of that is going to be the other porcelain gravity toilet on it. Again, these are not my favorite toilets. I might think about upgrading these because they are air driven with a uh, little flapper valve down there. Still have that intercom so you can talk to somebody else if you need some help. And there is a frosted glass window so you can lower it down for more privacy. But I like this uh, floor plan for a bathroom because normally the showers are right where the toilet is. The toilet is normally where the shower is. And then on the back wall here is just nothing but mirrors as a closet with a few hidden drawers inside of it. And I find it to be a little bit more awkward. I like this a lot better. Now, somebody has installed a washer dryer combo in what would be the main closet. This does work. I would recommend mounting it a little bit better or removing it, but another closet rod back there. That's where the uh, breakers are still gonna be just like a normal Newell. 
Another dressing closet right there. Hello. And right across the way is going to be the vanity. Three mirrored medicine cabinets above. That same solid Corian countertop material. It does have a little bit of water damage on the mirror backsplash. But if you're looking to find a motor coach at a good value that you can customize however you'd like it to be, this is something I think I would be given serious thought to between the obvious pride the previous owner has taken in this 1998 Newell, the Detroit Diesel Series 60 engine in the back, what I would label as a very livable floor plan in here, even though it only has two slide out rooms. And at 151,000 miles, it has pretty much proven itself to be a very reliable motor coach. Now, in full disclosure, I'm not the biggest Newell fan. I think they have uh, a lot of wasted space in their RVs or their motor coaches. And that's how you have so much open living space in here. There is also something to be said about I'm six foot tall. And uh, if I want to sit down on the sofa, I don't have to worry about ducking my head on any uh, cabinetry there. Or when I'm standing up, no cabinetry above my head. And maybe uh, cabinetry is just how you have more stuff that you don't need inside a motorhome. But that was this 1998 Newell Motor Coach with very simple, easy to use switches inside. And why there is a little bit of sunburn on some of the uh, outside paint. It's held up very well and I think it still retains a lot of its charm. And I don't think it looks its age even a little bit. In fact, if anything, I would say this looks a little bit newer than a 2010 I just saw today too. Now it does look like I have another storm coming in right there. I think it's time for me to hit the road and go home now, but I don't know. I think for me, at the price point they have it here at Premium Coach Group in uh, Gilbert, Arizona, it's a stunningly good buy with a lot of features that you're not going to get in a much more modern uh, motorhome. Maybe double the price. I mean, come on, the Series 60 Detroit Diesel is worth half the value of that motorhome by itself. It's a no-brainer. Well, thanks a lot for following along as I shared that 1998. Kind of a very rare motor coach uh, that I did an inspection for a potential buyer. I don't know if they're going to buy it or if they're going to pass on it. But if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call the guys here at Premium Coach Group in Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, bye. What's that, Ron? Number 13. All right, let's see. 13. No, wait. When you say buddy, you say bye, bud. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. That was for you. Ron's quite the character over here at Premium Coach Group in Gilbert.